But I've been to Europe. I've been all over Europe. Mm. I've never been to Costco. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Drinking with Craig and Roger. I'm Roger. And I'm Craig. And we have a special guest today, my old friend, Billy Bolton. Hi out there, YouTube land. All right. So um, a friend of mine went to Costco and said, you got to do uh, this box I saw that I'm tasting through. So we went to Costco and picked this bad boy up. It is a European beer collection. This box contains 10, 16.9 ounce cans of beers from five different European countries in several different styles, and I'm pretty excited to get into it. This is a convenient and fairly affordable way to find your way around all these different styles and get a, a true taste of uh, what some of these European countries have to offer with their beer, I think, right? Right, and, and these are all not really specialty beers. These are the mm. kind of beers that are drunk every day by almost everybody that drinks beer. So we're gonna see whether this thing is worth your time to pick up. And um, not too much else needs to be said about it right now. Let's uh, open this bad boy up. They give you this booklet. We're going to start with France. Uh, same French brewery, three different beers. What'd you find out about the brewery? The brewery was founded in 2008, so it's coming in the height of the craft beer movement around the world. Yeah. Uh, and so you can see that they are in that style because their labels are very comic and they seem to like cows. They definitely like cows. Yeah, it's the uh, Brasserie de Souter. Okay, I'll, count, I'll allow that. Brasserie. <laughs> It's the Brasserie de Souter. Not the Brasier. No, the it's Souter. not the Brasier. Brasserie. <laughs> the first one they go over here is their pale ale. So let's give this bad boy a whirl. All right. Be prepared. Yeah, we needed a third person because this is way too much beer for uh, two people to sample at one time. And he talked me into it. Yeah, it, it took a lot of convincing. Yeah. If there's free beer, think, Billy's think, there. I don't think you even finished a sentence before you before you agreed. <laughs> Luckily, yeah. I was done with church, so. <laughs> okay, so it has been poured, and uh, cheers, fellas. Let's uh, give it a try. All right, fine. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, very light. It's got some um, got some nice prominent hops there, but. Um, they don't overshadow much. No, it's a, it's mm. a, a very fruity uh, type uh, taste to it. Yeah, fruity, I yeah, would say so. Nice pale ale. And there are no, in this pack, there are no stouts or porters or any dark beers. They're all on the, the lighter end of things. And uh, by the way, the box is $30. So it's about $3 a can. Not bad, you know, for, for an imported beer this size by itself, where you don't have to buy a four or six pack of it. Um, gives you a really good chance to try these things. Yeah, and they're not, they're not, equivalent to 12 ounces either. They're, they're equivalent to actually more than a pint. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, makes it a better value there. Agree. Uh, this is a nice beer. Very nice. This is a great start. I could have, yeah, I could have two or three of these on a spring day. Yeah, two or three on a spring day, like big thumbs up there. All right, next one. Now this it was a World Beer Awards winner. The La Folie de Furieux, I believe. Uh, French triple pale ale. Ooh. So this has this has a lot of potential. Yes. And this thing ranks in significantly stronger. This one's nine percent alcohol. So this is uh, nine horsepower. <laughs> nine horsepower. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> or cow power? No. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Say merd. Yeah. <laughs> well. Sure doesn't smell 9%. Oh. A significantly more malty body mm. finish. Wow. Body. And mm. it's got a little spice at the end. A little bit. Uh, it's, it is reminding me a little bit of a Belgian beer. Yeah. Um, it's not quite a Belgian it's, triple, even though it's the same strength, but has some of those elements. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is a, this is triple pale ale. It kind of is a French triple in a way. 
You don't see beer from France very often, at least I don't. Only a few really make their way here. Their biggest export is that probably 1664. Yes, 1664. Which is really good on tap, yeah. but not very good in the uh, bottle. Okay, I could see that. I've never been impressed with it. But uh, in the French drink a lot of beer, a lot of, uh, a lot of Pilsners, lager type beers, uh, among other things, and Belgians and whatnot. But uh, yeah, just not a lot of it makes it out of the country for whatever reason. But uh, this is a winner, definitely a winner. I could certainly drink, you know, three or four of these on a hot summer day. Oh my God. <laughs> and you'd wake up on a cold summer night. <laughs> Okay, and up third, we have La Givre, I believe. Yeah, that means cold or snow or something like ah, that. Ah, okay, that would be why there's a frigid cow on it. That's this right. is a French white pale ale. So this is a hopped up wheat ale, uh, which I love up. wheat beers. And the color is very, very light, very pretty. Very nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Hops come out right at the end. Yeah, definitely, definitely like a, like a, a wheat beer. Yep. Uh, and it has a little spicy taste, I think. Coriander, I think, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It's, yes. It's it's kind of like a, a Belgian wit. Um, and then that sort of what I would describe as a little bit more medicinal hop flavor right at the end. Um, that's where those hops come in. Other than that, right until the finish, it's a pretty easy breezy light beer. Um, I smell like pineapple in it. Kind of... A little bit of almost tropical fruit notes. Yeah, I really like this one. Uh, for me, this is this is the standout, especially given it's just five and a half percent alcohol. Um, I think a Vit beer is generally a little more sweet than this particular one. I think, mm. uh, unlike most Vit beers, I would I I would like a slice of orange with this if served it at a bar. When it comes to beer, yes, you might have more of a sweet tooth mm. than me. Um, so maybe this one's a little too dry for you. No, no. Yeah, I, I would say so. Okay. But I could I could drink like three or four of them on a hot spring day. <laughs> so, let us move on to Slovakia. Yes, this is uh, the only can in here from Slovakia, and you do not see beer from Slovakia very often, at least in the United States. Did you um, happen to look up how to pronounce this? Do you have any idea what we're talking about Pokajna, here? Pokajna, I think is how it's pronounced. Pokajna. Pokajna. Yeah. Pokajna. Pokojni. So this is a lager from Slovakia. Mm. I'm, I can't say if I've actually had a beer from Slovakia before. My guess is that this is maybe the, one of the very few times mm. it's made it out of the country. 4.3% alcohol, so really light. That is an interesting nose. Oh, mm. wow, okay, yeah, see. That is. So Eastern European beers have unique smells and tastes by my memory, and I don't really like them, but they're unique. It sort of smells like toast, doesn't it? There's something in there. Maybe. Maybe toast. Toast is a good... Yeah. What is that? Horse blanket? Cereal grains of something? Cereal? cereal grain. Well, that would stand to reason. Have cereal I'm grain. getting like a Play-Doh, a soil type <laughs> kind of thing. Okay, um, yeah. Wow, this is a unique beer here. The, the finish is like the smell. It's like almost like a... A dusty old cork. <laughs> well, it, wow. it, but it but it does have the round body of a locker. It it and it's tastes he, and it's heavier body. Heavy. Than, than, it than tastes it, heavy. Yeah. Even though the color is still light and the the mouth feel is light, it has it feels, a. It feels heavy, but very hollowed out. Like mm. there's not a mm. lot going on in the middle. And this it, is one of the most interesting lagers I've had in quite a long time. Interesting and lager aren't normally things you put together. I know, yeah, but this is one. Am I, am I wrong? I mean... It's certainly the most interesting smelling. I think the finish, you know, has got a tiny bit of hops in it, but mostly it tastes like a dishcloth, I think. This tastes like what I would imagine drinking beer back, you know, a hundred plus years ago tasted like. Pulled it out of a cave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, is it my favorite? No. Is it interesting? Yes. We are now moving on to the Czech Republic. Oh and yeah. The, the beer is Tup, Tup by the Novar Brewery. Novar, okay. And this this bad boy is 8%, 8% lager. Eight horsepower. Eight horsepower, which ironically it has uh, another animal on it. So 
That reminds mm. me of the, the, the picture on the bull of oh, this liquor that we had, which would be comparable. The, the, it's about the I same. I think that this is going to be better. I hope this is better than the bull. I hope the ram is better than the bull. You'll remember we thought the bull was the worst of the. It was, how could I forget? Oh, that is not great. Well, we tend to forget bad things, you know, otherwise... I don't. Otherwise, women wouldn't have the second child, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. So let's give this bad boy a try. Now, Czech Republic has some seriously good beer. Czech Pilsners are among my favorites. I love that style. But they're usually pretty hop forward. Now, to me, this one has a similar... It has a similarity with the last beer in the nose. Yeah, but it's... it's oh. Its There's body that. is so nice, you know. It, it's got a really nice, multi, big body in the. Man. As it should for eight percent. Wow. And there's a nice follow through, like the nose really gets into the mm. body once you drink it. This one, it's, this one tastes a little metallic to me, though. I definitely get the metallic taste, but it's it's more of a copper and less of an aluminum. <laughs> okay, like, I, I've never broken it down. <laughs> Which type of metal? I, I kind of like it. It tastes more similar to the last one from Slovaki than I expected. Mm. Uh, I, I, I kind of like it pretty much. The the, the, the the metallic taste you're talking about is very mild, you know, mm -hmm. and it's sort yeah. of got a round body and a pretty nice finish. It's mm -hmm. not very hoppy, but that's okay. So I could drink two or three of these on a hot summer day. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> But we have another one from the same brewery. Now this is probably more traditional. Czech lager called Vlatovan. It certainly looks like a Pilsner or Kell. It is, yeah. they're and definitely notice, going And then notice they advertise very boldly on the top, craft, craft beer. beer. Craft beer. Mm -hmm. This may be the first time it legally got out of the country. I mean, yeah, you're not gonna find these anywhere else, to my knowledge, in the US, you know, unless you're there in the country. I'm not sure if you have any idea if these are if these breweries are more popular in their own countries. Let us know in the comments. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Ah, it's very nice. This tastes like what I expected when I saw mm. Czech Republic. Yeah, this is this is very very nice, very smooth. Oh yeah. Uh, very the hops are very mild. In mm -hmm. it. Uh, really nice round body. Yeah. Multi body. Mm -hmm. No fruit. Very. Yeasty, biscuity, dry, hoppy um, kind of thing going on with the malt presence. Still has a, a similar nose to the last beer, a similarity. So you can definitely tell it's the same brewery. Whether that's their yeast strain or the kind of, you know, um, grains they're using, I'm not sure. But definitely, definitely there. Um, yeah, it's nice. I like oh, it. It's very nice. And, and in the second sip, I can mm. taste a little bit more of the hops at, right at the finish. Now, Craig, I'm not much of a baseball fan, as you know. <laughs> yeah. But I think this one hits it out of the park. <laughs> and now, let's move on to Germany. Okay, now this is some well-explored familiar territory. Uh, we got two beers here. The first one They're... is going to be their wheat beer. Yes, it's uh, Love we... von Brine. Ah, oui, oui. wee. <laughs> and nice. This, nice. this brewery has been around since 1679. That's almost as old as the Reinhardtsgebot. So yeah, Germany has, God, they must have thousands of breweries because every town has at least one brewery, pretty much, that'll make beer for their local area. All right, let's give this puppy a whirl. I love Weiss beer. Oh, now that is a little different than normal. Almost has a butterscotch note to me on the nose. Butterscotch. Oh, it is very smooth. It's not like the wheat beers that I usually mm. have tasted. You know, I was going to say cheese, but I think butterscotch, it's, it hits it right on the head, I think. Yeah, this is, um, wow, this is interesting. Yeah, cheese, uh, cheesy, butterscotchy. Yeah. And the, the little spice. Note. I get the cheese. I actually get, a, I do get a little bit of cheesiness in the nose too. Yeah, yeah, that's the body. There's a little bit of spiciness uh, in the top part of the body in the finish. Mm. But it's not, oh, well. it's not, you know, it doesn't grab you and, and drag you down, you know? Yeah. It's, okay. it's very like mild. That. This I is, do like that. 
You like you like this one? I do like this one. Yeah, this is interesting. Very interesting. This tastes more like what I would imagine is a craft beer, um, in that it's just different. Very different. Uh, different than anything we have available out of Germany, you know, normally here. And then this brewery has been established for a very long time, since 1679, I believe. That's correct. Wow. So, my guess is, is they've been making beer like that. It's pretty much like this for at least 150, 200 years. I don't think that they made it exactly like this in 1679. They probably, probably have, you know, changed as fashions change throughout the centuries. One would imagine. And so, next, we are moving yeah. on to their Stromstoffertz, mm. which is same brewery. It's a lager. Okay, let's give it a try. Um, the description on the can sounds really interesting. This has hella foam to it, so pour gently. I am pouring down mm. the side like you're supposed to do to minimize the head, and I still ended up with a head like yours. That's because I came from... Like father, like son. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, <laughs> mine seems a little more hairy than yours, but what the heck. <laughs> Sick burn. Wow. Mm, dry. Nice and dry. Wow. Really crisp. And this may be the least sweet beer we've had so far. Oh, I, I can I can taste the, the bready, you know, stuff in, this, the, in the body of the, the, the taste. You know, the finish... I get that graham cracker in the nose. Yeah, the, the finish mm. is surprisingly hoppyless. Mm. At least the first sip. You know. I'm getting like a bitter herb thing to the taste. I love it. I, I am to to a very minor extent. It just tastes marvelously dry. It's a very interesting beer to me for being as light as it is. I fully agree. At this point, my two favorite ones are the ones from Germany. As far as brewery goes, this is my favorite brewery in this pack. And coming into the home stretch, we are going to Poland. Okay. Poland. We're going back to the back to that territory, like the Slovakian one, where I'm like, we could get some interesting flavors here. Well, you know, I've, I've combed, you know, West Side Bottle Shop looking for, you know, imported beers, and I have never seen anything from Poland. You don't see this often. Uh, they have two selections in here from the same brewery, Browar Rotmisters. Browar Rotmisters. That's the brewery. Rotmister. One of them is a Pilsner, which yeah. was a very light lager. It's funny that we're going to Poland because when I was in Berlin, mm -hmm. I met a bus driver and he was talking about school trips. I asked him, how long does it take to get to Warsaw? <laughs> he said it's about a six day march. So, a Pilsner, okay. Pilsner. Yes. Not from Pils, but from no. uh, Poland. Poland. Oh, okay. Clean nose to it. A little celery, maybe? Mm. You smell some coriander in there? Some, something like There's that. Something like it. Oh! I, I'm gonna All guess right. that's the correct thing to say. Whoa! Ah. Yeah, that, that coriander there is right is. at the finish. Wow, that's yeah, some yeah, hops that's on spicy, the finish, too. Stuff. Yeah. This one, again, has a little, a little bit of a metallic quality. Maybe that's the type of hops. Big hop presence on the finish there. Mm. And this one's 5.2% um, alcohol, so still on the slightly lighter side, but uh, I packs a punch. I hate to say my theory is um, this metallic taste that we're getting is the fact that these beers are coming from Eastern Europe and they might be taking so long to get here. So this particular one has a March 11th, 2024, which we're now uh, maybe a week been. and a half past that. I would assume that's a Best Buy date, so it mm. might be a little past its prime. And a lot of the others have 2025 dates. Mm. Uh, they last for a good bit. This one, maybe not so much. So I'm gonna try to taste past that metallic element. I would like to go to Poland. And, and try it fresh. fresh at the brewery. Yeah, now that would probably change our minds. And onto the final beer, the, also from Poland. The ultimate beer in the this box. Ultimate? The, Ultimate means last. Okay. So this is the ultimate beer in the box. Now, whether it's the best beer in the box uh, remains to be seen. The questionable India Pale Ale Lager. Ah, yes, that doesn't make any sense. Because there's two types of beers, ales and lagers. Ales are uh, top fermenting and lagers are bottom fermenting. How can you be an IPA slash lager? 
just as easily as you can be a black IPA. <laughs> that's, that's a little different. Well, I mean, it's, it's the terms there. I mean, black yes, it's and then an India a pale ale. I can have a black pale ale. Anyway. I've seen a black pale ale. And they exist. It smells a lot like the last one. Yeah, the hop smell like is it. not, you know, that This that is strong. a significantly lighter. This one's 4% alcohol, so it's going to be pretty light-bodied. The color, pretty golden. Mm. Smells similar to that, to the last one and the Slovakian one. Mm. Uh, I, 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 I hate to say that this is not an IPA. It's definitely not an this IPA. This is a lager. This is a lager. Yeah. So I think what they mean is hoppy lager. And it's not even that hoppy. It's close to its its best by date, but it's not there yet. So it's still got three months not to go. There yet. But I still get a little bit of metallic flavor, personally. Uh, it's there, prominent. I may, my taste buds just pick up on that really easy, I guess. But I guess I guess it, it's sort of a, a, a spicy, maybe coriander type finish. <laughs> But yeah. but I mean, that may be the hops they're using because not yeah. all hops are going to be exactly the same. I, I think I'm detecting some citrus, some orange type of flavors in here or something. This this sucker loads a lot of flavor for four percent alcohol. Oh yeah. The only other beers I can think of that are four percent typically are going to be like light beers like Bud Light, mm. you know Miller Ultra and whatever Michelob Ultra, and this is way better than those. Oh man. I think it punches above its weight. It's. It's bold, I would, it's not light. If you gave me this blind, I would guess this was 6% alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it it has that interesting nose, very, I, sometime I'll have to figure out what that is, but it's very, it's, it's very much what I would associate with Eastern European beer. So in, in that respect, it's right there to style for the region. And it's very much a taste of that area. Most people watching this video have access to Costco and are wondering whether they should pick this up. And no, I'm totally picking I that think, up if I'm in yeah, that, my local I'm Costco. I'm picking it up too. I think this is well worth the 30 bucks and I think that it's really interesting to try through these. Of course, most people are only going to try one, maybe two at a time, which is cool, but uh, you're getting access to a lot of beers that we in the U.S. don't normally have access to. They're very, very nice especially for a change. I think they compare very favorably to craft beers in this country, mm -hmm. you know, in this style. So our favorites from this pack, we really enjoyed both of the German beers. Mm. This Czech, more traditional Czech uh, Pilsner, this French white pale ale, Ugh. and I think we all like the French triple pale ale. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I know Costco does a few of these packs every year, so I think we definitely need to keep our eyes peeled for when they do their next one, because I'm interested. I am interested. The $30 for this pack mm -hmm. gets you around a lot of Europe for a lot less than it would cost you to do it on your in person. Without a doubt. <laughs> Without a doubt. So I think it's, a, it's a, a good endorsement from us. Definitely recommend it. I've had a good time drinking them. So have I. So if you like what we're doing, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment down there if you've tried this or if you have any uh, thoughts on what we've talked about or want to correct any of our butchery of the um, <laughs> brewing history and names of the breweries let us know and until next time cheers thanks for having me guys cheers yeah.